So let's let's get a little bit now into um um some of the, your, your investment process and things like yeah. that. And now, I, so you you have some focuses here. Um, let's talk about the industries here first a little bit. Yep. Uh, I have here tobacco, uh, tower companies, medical instruments, medical diagnostics, serial acquirers, software, yep. financial services, payments, gaming, and internet and e commerce. Now, is this the focus on both the short? And long side, maybe your long side right there. This is the long side focus. So shorts, okay. I'll kind of go wherever okay. the, the the market takes me. Um, okay. you know, wherever the wherever the most um, outrageous valuations and um, mm -hmm. you know clear um, management issues or or business issues uh, take me. But yeah, on the long side, yeah, I try to focus in those specific sectors. I will kind of venture out a little bit um, into. Uh, retail and, and things like that, um, but but not not materially. Um, and those are just sectors that I found that I can, you know, they had kind of have a couple things that I like. Well, one, I can understand all of them, or I do understand all of them. Two, they have good long term economic models where there's some sort of IP in the case of like the medical stuff or some sort of um, you know, marge, uh, some sort of uh, moat around the business, like in case of the towers, like there's, there's real estate, there's, um, you know, there's, there's only so much real estate and there's, a, you know, those permitting issues and things like that, that mm -hmm. keep it, um, you know, they keep the returns high over long periods of time. That's what I'm looking for on the long side is mm -hmm. businesses that can have outsize uh, returns on capital uh, and sustain those over long periods. So that's kind of why I picked those sectors, um, you know, or those industries is that those have basically shown to uh, be able to outperform on a uh, uh, return on capital um, perspective for a long time. Okay. And when you're on, on the long side, I mean, right now you have a few companies, but what is your kind of, um, I'm looking at your stuff here. What yeah. is your view on concentration diversification? You know, how, yeah. Let's go so usually, um, yeah, I usually will try to focus, I'll try to have about 20-ish longs and then 30-ish shorts. And okay. the reason is the shorts are usually smaller, um, just because I've learned over the years that you don't want a large short exposure in a single name, just because you never know what can happen, especially, you know, if there's high short interest or something like that, it can go uh, very badly for you very quickly. Um, so yeah, try to spread the, uh, spread the shorts out a little more than the longs. Um, but yeah, and then usually sizing wise, the longs like, uh, Kind of like my 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 a full size position on a long would be about ten percent, and a full size position on a short would be like three or four percent. Okay. Okay. So, so yeah, the shorts are much smaller. Um, now, are you, are you are you are you basically so pretty much diversified across? Are you taking you so you're three to four three to five percent? That's about it, and that's okay. Um, yeah, I, I I mean it it definitely varies. Like the more uh, conviction I have on certain names, uh, you know, will vary. Um, so mm -hmm. I usually probably only have three or four positions kind of at the max position. Um, okay. Side and, and same on the long side. Uh, and now, then everything else kind of is based on, you know, I do trade a little bit around technicals and things like that. Um, so I do actually one of the, so I kind of, in my past, I've kind of tried a tons of different investment <laughs> strategies. So okay. I kind of mentioned I was Graham and Dodd, a uh, value guy for a while. I traded options, you know, using, you know, technicals in my, uh, you know, right out of college in my twenties. Right. Um, so I know kind of the technical side as well. So I do uh, try to position things uh, a little bit uh, just using technicals and, and things like that. Um, and, Interesting. And, you know, cut you know trim things when they get a little too expensive or the charts uh just looking a little toppy and uh kind of the opposite at the bottom so yeah so are you so are you when you have these uh weightings in your portfolio you might start somewhere are you actually continually rebalancing based on not just technicals but also on the way yeah, on fundamentals as well yeah okay. yeah usually I, I i i mean i'm not doing it every day but yeah i will i'm always looking at it and always trying to rebalance based on uh, you yeah. know, if there's a big earnings change or something like that, or, you know, a negative, um, you know, news item that changes, you know, my, you know, confidence in the, in the company or the management or something like that, I'll, you know, trim positions. Or mm -hmm. I think if I really lose confidence in the management, I usually exit positions. That's the one thing that I've found that 
is just kind of like a, it's either a check or it's either there's a checkbox next to management or there's not, you know, there's not like a half check next to management. Um, right. so you either like trust them and you uh, think that they're, you know, a good outstanding management team or you don't. Um, right. So if you, if you don't, you shouldn't be invested on the long side. Um, right. So when I lose that check, I, I usually uh, exit the position.